block is called a hidden star. There's a lot of half square triangles in here, so this is a good chance for you to use your eight at a time method to make half square triangles if you want to try it. Here's the diagram. There are mostly half square triangles and there are eight flying geese units. So you can also use your flying geese four at a time and we'll talk about those later. Here is what the blocks look like, uh, block to block. And this is four blocks, of course. I saw pictures of a quilt like this and it looked really neat all, having all the different colors and having each block made from just the accent fabric and the background color. Here are the patches, there are three of them. The first one, patch A, is a two inch finished half square triangle. If you're cutting these by hand, you'll cut two and seven eighth inch squares Cut the squares in half once, diagonally, and you'll have two patches. For this block, we'll need 24 patches of the accent fabric and 24 for the background fabric. And that means that you'll have to cut 12 of these squares. And when you cut each of them in half, you'll have your 24 patches. Here's the AccuQuilt die if you want to use AccuQuilt. Patch B is a quarter square triangle, four inch finished. This is for the flying geese. It's the geese part of the flying geese. You will cut a five and one quarter inch square, cut the square in half diagonally twice, and you will get your four patches. For the background, you'll need four patches, and for the accent fabric, you'll need four patches. The last patch is C. It's a four inch finished square, so we cut our squares four and a half inches. And we need one patch of the background for our, the center of the block. Here are your AccuQuilt dies if you are using AccuQuilt. The first thing we'll do is make the half square triangle units. You can do these by, by sewing your patches together if you cut these by hand or by AccuQuilt or you can use the eight at a time method to make half square triangles and here are the size squares you cut for that. And then at once you make the half square triangles, you'll make the two different flying geese units. If you've cut by hand or by AccuQuilt, you'll sew the A patch to the B patch on each of these. If you want to use the flying geese alternative to make your flying geese units, here are the sizes to cut your squares. If you're not familiar with these two methods, the half square triangle eight at a time or the flying geese four at a time, I have a video that shows both of these techniques and you just scan this code and it will take you to that video. Here are the fabrics I've chosen. It's one fabric for the accent and one fabric for the background. The accent fabric is from a collection called Creativity Glows from Moda Fabrics and the background fabric is Grunge Spots also from Moda Fabrics. First thing I'm going to do is sew the half square triangles together and then I'll sew the flying geese units together. There are two different flying geese. One has the geese as the, the background fabric and one has the geese as the accent fabric. For the accent fabric, we will stitch these triangles. And for the background fabric, we'll stitch these triangles. What I do on this case is I flip them like this, match the bottom edge, stitch your quarter of an inch, and then press it, and then do the same thing on this side to make your flying geese. Now I'll go and piece all these and we'll come back and put the block together. Here are a few things I want to show you. I cut my half square triangles by hand, and if you don't, if you cut them by hand and, or, and you don't use AccuQuilt, you need to cut off these little nubs and I just cut them off with my scissors because they get in the way and it makes your piecing less accurate I believe. So just cut them off and the scissors I use, these are micro serrated scissors from Karen Buckley and I like this size. They grab the fabric really well and they're nice and sharp and I wanted to show you when I do the flying geese. If you again have cut these by hand you'll end up with some of the nubs down here too, so we'll cut those off. When you sew the first side on, so I, I sewed this side on first and now it's pressed, I go and cut this off and I cut it off even with this other side, just like that, because again that nub gets in the way. 
Then I take this triangle that I'm going to sew on here, flip it over, and I'm matching the bottom edge here. The bottom and this edge here. So try to match it as good as you can. In this part here, you're going to sew a quarter of an inch on this edge here. And this, here's our little angle again, if you watched some of my other videos. This is the angle, and you want your stitching to come right at this corner. So you're going like this, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, and come right at that angle. Here's one that I've done it with already. See how it comes right at the angle? And when you flip this open and you press it, then you get your nice quarter of an inch. And you also get a little nub you have to cut off there too. So that's how to do those flying geese. Before we put this block together, let's look at our grid. Since we've been discussing grids and how to deconstruct blocks, the biggest clue for me when looking at this is this big square in the center. That tells me a lot. That this is probably the center of the grid. So there's three, there's one above and one below, and one on the side and one on this side. So we can say that this is a three by three grid. Here is one third, one third, one third, and then the same down this way. And if we divide these grids up, we'll look at this corner unit, and we see they're all half square triangles. So let's take four of them and lay them out. And this is what the corner unit looks like. You could at this point go ahead and make four of these since you know they're all the same. They're just rotated around each corner. Or you can lay the block out in these long rows and piece those together. But I find it easier to break it down into the unit size because you can just do four of these and you're almost there. And then we'll do the next unit, with, which is the two flying geese. And the flying geese are laid out like this, up here, and then this one goes like this. So the two flying geese together make this chevron unit. Also four of these and four of these, then we'll lay the block out in our three by three grid. Now we have our nine units to fill in our three by three grid. Let's start in the center, add our fine geese, and then add our corner units. Now you'll just sew the units into rows. You'll have three rows. Then you sew the rows together and your block is finished. Here's the block and here is the hidden star right in the middle. And I wanted to add that there's a lot of opportunities in this block where points meet. And so you have a lot of opportunities to cut off these points and we don't want that. So in order to prevent that, I have a short little clip from another video I did that shows you how to match these points as you're stitching the seams together. Here's the block. Now stay tuned for the little clip about matching points. When you piece this block together, you're going to have the four points on the square and square are going to match with the point of the flying geese. And you want to be sure you don't cut off any of these points. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And I've got the right sides together, so I want to match these two. What I'm going to do is find this point right here and put your pin right in that point. You can see that. It's right in that point. And now pick this up and put it right in this point. Now put them together and if you look at it from the top you see the pin is going straight. It's perpendicular. If I scooch this over some and the pin is now at an angle that's not right. Your, your points will not match. So scooch it over till it's going straight perpendicular to the fabric 
and it's coming straight out of the fabric this way. And then just put it in into the fabric like that. Now when you're sewing this together, you'll start here on this edge, stitch a quarter of an inch, and you're going to aim right for this point where the pin went into the fabric. What I normally do is I start pulling this pin out a little bit and then I'll just slow down a whole bunch and then stitch on it and take the pin out. You start stitching up here, quarter of an inch, and then just start aiming for this point where the pin goes in the fabric. Straighten out your, your edges and then start aiming for a quarter of an inch and stitch all the way off. And that will get you your, your points matching without being cut off like this right here. Okay, that's what you want.